What's up, Stillmates Warriors? I was gone in October. I got a little sick. It was supposed to be like my break and it kind of backfired on me. Um, I ended up actually fixing a home, getting my lymph nodes all swollen, and it was just terrible. But I'm back at it, and I'm actually like really excited today. Um, I, and I think I say that in like every podcast. I think I have to find like a new thing to say. But I'm really excited because um, my first guest is a woman. Obviously, I'm always trying to bring out all the women that are amazing in the world. And I'm actually really excited because it's Kim Fox. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce you real quick. She's worked in the health field as an Army combat medic for the last 16 years. She's trained in several martial arts over the past eight years. And although I've seen you swinging, your specialty is in kettlebell. And you've won multiple world kettlebell championships, which I'm sure you're going to tell us about, hopefully. So, Kim, tell us about your fitness story. Like, where did it start for you? Like, what led you to the kettlebell? And then finally, like, kind of what led you to, I know you, you say, like, oh, you know, I don't mace very often. And I don't know why people are making a big deal. But it is a big deal in the mace community. But kind of, like, what led you to kind of swing a mace? Okay, so my fitness story is um, I was I was pretty chunky as a kid, although I didn't really know I was chunky until later on. So I tried to join the army when I was 18, and I went to go enlist, and they were like, "I'm sorry, you're too fat. <laughs> you need to go home." Oh man! So, <laughs> so I went home, and I lost. I ended up losing like almost 30 pounds, I think. So I think the first time I went back to join, they were still like, I'm sorry, your body fat percentage is the same. And I had lost like 10 pounds. They're like, you're still too fat. <laughs> you need to come and lose more weight. So um, I ended up losing like 30 pounds and I, I joined the army. And um, so that's kind of where my fitness training kind of started. I mean, I've always been into lifting weights and doing sports, um, but I don't think I really ever knew that I wasn't that healthy until I went to go join and they were like, no, actually you're kind of a little bit fat. I'm like, Oh yeah, I guess you are right now. Looking back at pictures, you're right. I'm like a little bit fat. Um, so after I joined the army, um, I had started learning how to box while I was deployed. And then when I came home from my deployment in Iraq, um, I still was really wanting to learn how to box. But uh, the first gym that I went to, the boxing coach told me that he didn't work with women. And I was like, well, that's wow. weird. I could give you money and you don't want to take it. <laughs> so um, there was also a Muay Thai gym that was part of this boxing facility. And uh, so I went and I asked the Muay Thai instructor, Andy Zerger, if he would, you know, like if I could train there. And he was like, yeah, of course, please give me your money, you know. Badass. <laughs> so that is where I met my husband. He uh, did Muay Thai there and also Jiu Jitsu. So uh, that's where we met. And um, I, we started messing around with some kettlebell stuff during that time period. Um, one of his friends who, uh, was actually something he had interned for when he was going through his exercise physiology program for his master's degree, um, had said, Hey, you know, you like doing this kettlebell stuff, this, you know, ballistic exercises. He's like, this is also a sport. So he kind of got me to dabble into the world of kettlebell. And when I first learned how to swing the mace, I was actually in California for a kettlebell thing. And, right um, I had contacted Eric Doyle and I was like, Hey, I was like, can I come over? And you just, cause I had seen him doing stuff on Facebook with these huge long sticks with balls at the end, of them, <laughs> like swinging them around like a Viking warrior. And I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. So oh, nice. I had contacted him and I was like, Hey, can I come by? I'll pay you for, you know, um, some time if you want to teach me and Jake, like how to swing the mace. So we went over to his gym, which, um, we were there, I don't know, for like a couple hours and he taught us how to swing the mace and it was, I, it was so much fun. Wow. So, um, that's kind of where it got started. And after that time, I think we went and bought two evil monkey maces. So they're right six foot long maybe. And they're only like one is six pounds. The other one's like 12 pounds. Right. So we had bought those two and we were kind of messing around with those. And then um, I think Rick had contacted me kind of through the kettlebell community. Um, and then we had brought him out for a May seminar 
in oh. Kansas. I think it's like the only May seminar that's ever been in Kansas. That's so awesome. 10 or 15 people that went into the seminar. Um, and it's just kind of, we've just kept doing it since then. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I finally got to kind of swing an evil monkey mace. Mr. Mace man had me try it cause he had one and that did not go well. Like I'll tell you, like you're, you're did you strong. Huge one? Huh? That huge one that he has. I think so. It was, it, it was I think it was orange or something. I remember uh, it being orange. And he swung that like the big mama one, the one that's yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, no, I can't do that. I, it, it, I usually don't say no, so I'm like, I actually had a little bit of fear with, with swinging that <laughs> large of a maze, because I'm fucking short, okay? People don't know this, but I'm like 5'2", so that thing was like gigantic. Yeah, uh, swinging the longer maze, it definitely is a little bit more of a challenge, just that you have to be aware of like where your body's at. I mean, I've definitely hit myself more than one time and like the ankles or um and it's not pleasant when you get hit so yeah <laughs> I can't imagine being shorter like e you have to think about even more while you're swinging I appreciate it though you know I was like thank you for uh, <laughs> letting me try something that I'm just not ready for <laughs> right on but um so when it when it came to the kettlebells you mentioned that you guys were doing martial arts did you guys kind of do kettlebells to kind of like get you like prepped for martial arts um, well, at the time I was doing jujitsu and Muay Thai, um, and I hadn't, you know, when we were originally training and learning how to use kettlebells, I wasn't really, kettlebell wasn't like a thing. It was like, mm -hmm. kettlebells was still really brand new. And even like, I think Strong First was really just kind of just getting started around that time. Like there just wasn't a whole lot going on with it. I mean, you could kind of find some stuff online. What year um, was this? Just curious. Yeah. Maybe around 2000, even 2006. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a while ago. So, yeah, so it was a while ago. Man, that's making me feel kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> when I came back from Iraq, it was like 2006. So um, there really wasn't, there definitely wasn't anything out there for maces. And there really wasn't a whole lot for kettlebell. You just kind of had to like figure it out on your own, especially not in the Midwest. Like we don't have stuff like that. So, um, when we first started using it, it was all for like strength and ballistic work, you know, like jujitsu, you have to be moving at all different types of angles, same thing with Muay Thai. Um, and so, you know, we were trying to learn different ways to strengthen and, you know, provide more endurance, like for, for these two different things. Um, now I do push kettlebells as well as mace lifting for all of the jujitsu guys, just because they're so closely mirrored in the amount of endurance that you need for kettlebells or for mace and how long people are doing like jujitsu matches because their matches are you know, like three, five or seven minutes long. Right. Well, well sets are 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, so they, they mirror up really well with the endurance aspect of it, um, as well as, you know, the strength side where both these items, while well, they're going to build strength for you, they're not going to, it, they're, they're definitely not strength focused. All right. That's the best way to say it. Right. Right. Where it's, I mean, you're going to get stronger, but I mean, you're not going to walk around like looking like a bodybuilder from, I mean, you could for kettlebells if you get heavy enough bells, but right. Right, which I actually prefer like the CrossFit or the kettlebell or the mace bodies over the bodybuilder type, you know what I mean? All aesthetics and like, <laughs> right? I'm not going to lie. When I see like DLB shoulders, I'm like, so Daniel and Bailey, I'll like see her shoulders. I'm like, man, I need some shoulders like that. But then I'm like, <laughs> that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> right? That's not big. <laughs> right on. So kind of walk us through how you became a champion and stuff like that because that's really interesting especially for a woman because you know i've read about it it's, it's it was kind of hard for women to get into those type of competitions before right um well when i first started well for for double bells like there wasn't any places that you could go compete as a woman so um my coach arseny zernikoff he um when i had first asked him to coach me I originally wanted to do single kilogram or single arm, 24 kilogram long cycle. And, um, he said, you know, I'll coach you, but you know, we're not going to do single arm 24 kilogram. And I was like, okay, what are we going to do? He's like, we're going to do two bells. And I was like, well, where would I go compete? And he's like, I don't know, but we'll find a place. You're just going to train and we will find a place. 
so that's kind of how it got started. Um, and really it was kind of funny cause there was a lot of pushback even from women, um, for devil bells at first, I think partially because a lot of people had been working on single arm stuff and they didn't want all their hard work to be lost right. if single arm work went away. So there was a lot of pushback. Um, some people didn't want to do it. And for a lot of the Russians, like they didn't want girls to do it. Um, there was all these questions about whether it harmed our breasts and caused cancer and oh, God. might make my uterus fall out. I don't, <laughs> like there's, I've had so and I've actually had people direct, directly ask me, you know, well, what about your breasts? And I'm like, what do you mean? What about my breasts? Like, what do you mean? What about them? Like, I'm like, women have been carrying children around on their hip like this forever. Like nobody ever says anything when I'm walking around carrying my son with this hyperextended back position, you know, with him sitting on my hips and I walk around, no, nobody bats an eye. And he weighs as much as one 24 kilogram bell. But as soon as you put a weight on there, they're like, oh, well, is that going to injure you? And I'm like, well, it wasn't a problem earlier when I was being a mom. Now it's only a problem when I'm trying to be strong. Right. <laughs> and it sucks that that happens all the time, right? Right. And like every freaking sport. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a bunch of pushback, but I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people don't like change. And so I think with everything, with any kind of sport, when you're trying to push change, there's pushback either because people feel like they're something, they're going to be losing something or it's going to change some aspect of the sport that they like or enjoy. Right. So, I mean, I, I guess it's to be expected. Right. No, it is. So, so let's keep, keep telling me, like, how'd you okay. become a champion? Come on. I want to know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I train a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's obvious. I see you on, on uh, Facebook live all the time. Like, yep, she's doing it again. Uh, yeah. I'm like, do you guys want to see me do kettlebell again? Like I'll post another video in two days. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Like really I, it's probably just more luck than anything. I think a lot of it is that I started doing double balls. Well, when I started, nobody was doing it. So I mean, I didn't really have anybody to lose against in the beginning. I mean, I had, I had people competing. Um, but I think some of my success is also because I was just first. So there's tons of women coming up now. And, you know, I'm in my mid thirties now. So I'm probably on the downhill slide of my athletic ability so which is okay do you um, feel it um i don't know like i mean i think i still have a couple more years left but normally after 30 is like when you start to decline as far as right. athletic ability like 30s is like your prime right. so i came into it in my 30s so i was in my prime i had a bunch of big increases when i first started um and i think i probably still have like a year or two a couple years left um where i'll be able to perform at my prime but there's a lot of girls coming up now that, you know, started training when they were 16 and they're going to surpass me easily. I think like yeah, yeah. just because they've had so much longer to prep for it, they're younger, their bodies repair more easily. Um, they've got less injuries. Like, I mean, I've got, I mean, I have a ton of injuries, but I mean, you just get hurt. Like as you get older and older, you just start building up injuries that you've accumulated over the years. And then when you get up in the morning, you're like, Oh, my knee. Right. Oh, right. So <laughs> you know, normal, like, old people, thing. all the stuff that, yeah, you made fun of old people about mm -hmm. be like, Oh yeah, you're so achy. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Now I see what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I'll make fun of my mom and she's like, you just wait, you just wait till you're my age. You're going to, you're, you're going to regret saying that. <laughs> You know, along the way, I've had a ton of people that have been really supportive of me. Um, I've got a great coach. My husband always pushes to make sure I get my trainings in because, you know, um, I work full time for the army. We own a gym that we obviously like I basically do that full time, too. I'm a mom. Um, and then I have, you know, this kettlebell thing that I do on the side that I go compete all kinds of places. Um, so there's definitely a lot of things like for anybody, there's a lot of things working against us. If you're not like a paid athlete, um, which most people aren't, if you're not a paid athlete, there's a lot of stuff working against you to, to be successful because you have to work around your work and, you know, just day to day activities. Um, so my husband's done a really awesome job. Just like when the days when I come home and I have missed my workout schedule time, um, but he'll push me like, Hey, you really need to go in and, 
and get your workout done. So that way, um, I have him there to push me to do that. Um, That's awesome. So, I mean, that makes a huge difference because sometimes I might just be like, yeah, I'll just do it tomorrow. And he'll be like, no, you have to go in. So, um, now do you you have any like advice for women who don't have that husband who's the coach and who's fucking awesome and who like literally have to go through like that sort of thing? Cause like we all have to go through that. Do you have any like tips (sighs) on how to do it? You know, the, the biggest thing I could say for, for anybody is, you know, like time's a choice, right? We choose to make time or we choose to not make time. And if you're choosing to not make time for something, it's something that you want to do, you know, you kind of like say to yourself, like, you know, if it was kettlebell, I'd say, well, maybe kettlebell is not a priority then to me. And if I don't like the way that sounds, then I need to make the time. You know, if I say kettlebell is not a priority and I'm okay with it being that, then, then that's true. Like I can make time for other things. So, um, it's really cold in my office, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it, are you shivering i am shivering well it's like it's like degrees here outside and now oh, wow. and now the sun's starting to go down here um so so yeah what was i saying okay so things that people can do yeah, yeah. so yeah the biggest thing is just to make make the time you know if that means like sometimes i have to take my bells or uh, there's a video out there of me like swinging the mace and I'm out behind our armory. So I was out at training. Um, I just basically brought kettlebells and maces with me and I would go out on my freaking lunch break and I had all the soldiers like walking by, like making fun of me cause I'm outside working out like in my <laughs> on my lunch break. So you just have to make the time. And that means I have to sacrifice my lunch time or that means, you know, I'm, I'm sacrificing something. But if it's something that you really want, like you have to choose to sacrifice something like that's just part of it, you know, and that's really like when you asked earlier, like what makes you successful? Well, I sacrifice a lot of things to, to be successful and from not being able to go to birthday parties to um, having to go in and train on my birthday to going in and training on Saturdays and Sundays on holidays, you know, carrying these bells with me to other countries so I can train while we're on vacation or finding a place to go train that's taking, you know, days out of my vacation. So, I mean, realistically to be successful at anything is that you have to be willing to sacrifice and it's okay if you don't want to sacrifice, you know, but don't expect to be successful if you're not willing to. Right. Or to get the results just overall. Right. Right. Yeah. You got to work for it. You know, yeah. I think I saw, I think I saw a post like that on Instagram. It was like, you want, you want the body, you got to earn it. Right. And it goes with anything I think in life. Yeah. It's the same way. Like, um, you know, well, you said I was a medic. I mean, now I'm a recruiter. Um, And it's the same thing. Like we're always looking for people to enlist and, you know, realistically, if I want to be successful at that, I have to put in a ton of time in order to make sure that I'm successful at my job. Um, And so people aren't successful. You can look back and see how much time they're actually putting in. You can be like, well, you might've been trying hard, but were you really putting in all the time you needed to, to be successful? Right. Oh, yeah. Now, something that I, I'm not, I'm not going to mention the website, but you mentioned goals. And I think it'd be awesome to hear it from you, Champion Kettlebells. Um, what is goal? Like, what do you, how do we go about that? Like, when it comes to goals and just getting shit done, I guess, with kettlebells or maze training, like, like, how, what's your routine on that? You set a goal and then what happens? Okay, well, for me, we have, well, we did have a goal wall. I'm going to have to redo it now. We just changed the gym That's around. Cool. We have this huge kettlebell that we would write our goals on. And then when you, you achieve the goal, you get to go up and, you know, like mark it off the wall. It's like in shock. <laughs> but we moved the gym around. So now the kettlebell is all the way in the back of the gym. And so we lost it. So I'm going to have to figure out something new to write our goals on, which I hadn't thought about till just now when you said that. Um, so <laughs> Getting you so back on track. Normal- like write down a goal, um, that I want to achieve in this case, it would have been on the wall. Um, and then, you know, 
I work to achieve that goal. So I think it's important for people to set, you know, short-term, long-term goals, and then also like be realistic and make sure that your goals are um, quantifiable, you know, don't just be like, I want to be skinny, you know, or I want to be strong. Like you need a quantifiable goal. And I think a lot of times people make it too like broad, like right. pick something specific, you know, I want to do 72 reps or, you know, I want to be able to swing, um, 35 pound mace, like make it very specific, um, when you're choosing goals. And then, um, I always find it helpful to write, write it down just because it's visual. Um, other people can see it. You know, it's like if you enter a weight loss challenge, like it seems like it's easier to keep up with it because what you're doing is very visible to other people. Right. So, um, I don't know if that's what you're asking about or if there's some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to read the quote because it, it really hit me when I was reading it. It says, I believe without goals and challenges, one cannot be happy. Oh, that's your quote. That. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. And it inspired me. And I was like, I got to bring up goals on the podcast. I, I am totally about personal growth. And, um, I think a lot of times, uh, even with me too, like a lot of times people get like only see personal growth in maybe their job. And so, um, but they don't ever really set any personal goals that they decided on their own, you know, like being successful in your job, um, or even me for kettlebell, you know, it's kind of like my job now. Right. So once I feel like I've been successful in that, like how, what am I going to do to continue to develop myself personally and continue to grow as a person and develop as a person, you know, like, what am I going to pick outside of kettlebell to continue that journey? you know, because can I, can I continue personal growth after I've already like developed a portion of me, you know, like, so what else can I choose to develop somewhere else? Right. Um, and I think a lot of times people, people don't have that in their personal lives. And so they end up feeling kind of empty or like they haven't, you know, achieved something. And I don't think always like a job is the best way to express that. Cause one, because the goals that you set for that, normally aren't ones that you completely picked, right. you know, like for recruiting, like I have to get a certain number of people in. So even if I say like, I want to set the goal of meeting the goal that somebody else set, it's not something that I really chose for myself. Right. Um, like being able to learn a different language or so I do think yeah. personal progress and goals are very important. Now, did you say that? Did, did you say that quote or I guess those words because at some point you, you didn't have goals and you know, that whole structure down and you were unhappy at some point, like obviously we have to experience something for sure. Something so deep like that to come out of us. Right? Um, I don't know that I was like ever unhappy, but I did feel like for a time period, I shouldn't say that. So, um, I do, there was, I don't know how long ago, I guess it was probably before I started doing kettlebell. Um, I remember there was a time period where I was going through where I just didn't feel like I, everything was going good at work, but I just felt like I sucked. We all have a period. <laughs> so uh, I just felt like I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't accomplishing anything, you know, and I was doing good at work and stuff, but, um, but I just kind of sucked at everything. I just didn't have anything going on. Like, um, and I think part of that was, you know, like when I was growing up through high school, I played softball and, um, I was doing all these other active things where, um, I, I had personal goals that I was working on. Um, and then after I joined the military, I just, I had lost all that, you know, stuff that I was doing in my personal life, just because when you get older, like you just run out of things to do, you know, they don't have, you know, when you're in high school or when you're a kid, there are all kinds of things that you can go do that they have set up for a younger audience. And then it's like you turn 20 and then they like, just don't give a shit about you anymore. They're like, figure it out on your own. And there really isn't a lot for you to do. So I had started doing jujitsu, but while I really liked jujitsu, I wasn't like in love with jujitsu. I shouldn't say that because my husband's going to listen to this and be like, <laughs> you don't love it. But it wasn't like, I like it. I do like doing it, but I like love doing it. Like I loved playing softball. Um, and I just, while I liked it, I didn't, I didn't love it. You know, I enjoyed doing it, but, and, and I'm definitely the person like I have 
I have to be always pushing forward and having progress in something or working towards progress. Um, and I struggle with failure, like really bad. I should just try not to fail at all because. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a learning experience. Because I struggle right? with. It. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yes, I, I did go through a period like that. I remember I, I think I, I don't remember if I was, we were going to bed or if I had just woken up, but I remember like crying and talking to my husband and um, basically complaining or that I, I was just depressed that I wasn't doing anything. And he's like trying to console me and tell me that he loves me and I'm awesome. And I'm like, no, I'm not. You're just saying that because I let you have sex with me. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, you have to say that. Just like you have to say I'm pretty every day. Um, <laughs> So, and eventually like I, I kind of moved out of that depression phase or whatever. Um, but I don't think there was like a couple of weeks or months that I was not feeling good. Right. Um, so I, but I haven't, not that I don't ever have depression because like everybody gets depression, but, um, I do feel like my life is just so much more fulfilled now because I'm always working towards whatever goal it is I'm, I'm working on at the moment. Um, and so I think that's really important for people. And I don't think they, a lot of people don't get enough personal goals and they don't, um, really work on something that they really want for themselves. You know, like when you're a mom, especially moms, moms are probably like the worst <laughs> because they use their kids as a means to like not develop themselves because, well, I have to do this for my kid. And you're like, well, eventually your kid's going to be moved out of the house and they're going to be gone and you're going to be left with nothing, you know, because you've gone the last 20 years not doing anything for yourself. Like somebody's going to be mad because I say this, but it's like, no, but it's you know, true. I love you it. You aren't, you aren't your children, you know, your, your children are tenants. Like they're there to learn from you, but you aren't your children and you can't make being a mom, like everything that is you, because that's just something that you do right. and is very important. But, you know, the problem is, is like, once your kids leave, what do you have? You're just like, and I, and I think a lot of moms, they struggle with it because their kids leave and then they're just like, who am I? Right. If I'm not a mom, who am I? Right. So. And I'm, I'm glad you're bringing the mom part out because you're a mom right? Yeah. And like, how do you, how do you manage all of that as a mom? Like, that's interesting. That's, that's actually a very interesting this, topic. It's probably mostly because of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's hard. And sometimes like, especially being in the army, um, and then I have this kettlebell stuff too. Um, I, I do think I miss out on a lot of things that, you know, I could be there more for Liam, but I try and make sure that when I'm there, that I'm there. And that um, my dad was in the military too, and he was gone a ton when I was a kid. Mm. But honestly, I don't, I don't remember him ever being gone um, because when he was home, he was like home. Right. So I don't really remember a time when he wasn't there. So I hope that it's the same for Liam. You know, like probably right now, he'll be like, oh, well, you're, <laughs> when I go to training, he'll be like, are you sleeping at your work? And I'm like, <laughs> like he thinks that I'm sleeping in my office and that's why I'm oh. coming and not that I'm out in the field. And so right. um, he'll be like, are you sleeping at your work tonight? And I'm like, yes, I'm sleeping at my Aww. work. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I hope that, you know, when I'm there, that I'm there and I'm like present with him and that, you know, we play and I mean, there's no one way to know how to raise a kid. Right. And I definitely don't know the best way. I don't know that anybody really knows the best way. You can just only hope that, you know, you're winning if your kid doesn't turn into a serial killer. <laughs> so, <Amen. laughs> and I don't think Liam's going to be a serial killer. He hasn't killed any small animals yet. So <laughs> perfect. We're probably okay. You're okay. <laughs> Right on. Okay. So, I mean, cause I do see that. I see that sometimes moms kind of, I can't really get into the gym today because I have to do this. But I feel like you guys can, you know, rearrange things sometimes. Like how you said, sacrifice a little bit sometimes, come home and then pay attention, right? Be in the now. We try and make our gym. I mean, sometimes it's a hassle because like 
when you're a gym owner, you're trying to keep things organized, but you have to also understand that, you know, people have lives and they're trying to make it to do these things that they want to do in their personal life, for example, like jujitsu. Um, and so we try and make it so people can bring their kids to the gym, you know, um, with limitations, like we're trying to keep them in a certain area or on the bleachers so their parents can work out. But right. I've had plenty of moms that are like, oh, well, I can't come in yet. Cause you know, I'm like, my baby is still, you know, I'm like, well, is your baby walk? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, well you get to do what I did. And you just bring them in in a carrier and just yeah. let them out, you know, if right. you need to go over and feed them and then, you know, it, it'll be totally fine. Like if they cry a little bit, it's fine. Like, I think sometimes we're afraid to, especially I am too, um, that we don't want our children to make other people uncomfortable when really most right. people, especially if they have kids, they're just like, no, we get it. It's cool. Like just right. do what you do. Yeah. And I think it's more inspirational seeing a mom come through with their kid and they're like, you sit over there, I got to go work out. Right. Well, and I think it's important for kids to know that, that your, your goals, what makes you happy is important to you. And it's, it's important, not that, you know, they come before the kid, but like my stuff is just as important as your stuff is. So you need to wait here and sit, let me do my thing. Because when it's time for me to go watch you play soccer out in the 20 degree weather, just remember, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? right, right on. So, okay. We talked about mom stuff, which is awesome, but I want to get back to the mace because you know okay. that most of my listeners want to know about you and the mace. So let's talk about like why you're doing it. Is it for fun or, or do, can we ever see Kim competing? Have you I did compete with the mace? I did. You did? I don't remember how many reps I did. I think I did it with five, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I did it with like a 12 pound mace. Cause I think Jake did it with like a, maybe a 17 and a half. I think I did 12 and a half and he did like 17 and a half. No, I have competed. I would love to go compete. Um, it's just like trying to find, um, now I can always do it at the end of a kettlebell competitions because after I've already competed. Right. So, I mean, I love it because, well, one, I like the rhythmic, rhythm, rhythmic, rhythmic. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Sorry. I just learned to talk today. So, um, I like the rhythm of it. Just, I mean, it's very cyclic. So just like long cycle is, um, or just like kettlebell is, um, the mace is, cyclic, you know, you're, you're swinging in a set pattern over and over and over again. So, I mean, one, I think it's great mentally cause you can kind of get lost in it. Right. Um, but I also like the effects for the shoulders and for the arms, as far as mobility and range of motion, especially cause it's not necessarily a uh, range of motion that I normally do, but it does put my shoulders into the same position that I have for lockout. Um, it strengthens my triceps, which is important also for my lockout. It strengthens my grip. You know, it puts me in rotational pulls that are different from, you know, for kettlebell, it's really just, you know, more on a, just front to back where this is, can be more rotational and um, circumferential. So um, I like that aspect of it. Um, plus it's cool as shit to be swinging like a heavy thing. <laughs> Yeah. And then everyone's like, what is Kim doing? Right. I just think it like, I like it cause it's, well, I like it when it's really heavy just because I can really feel the tension on me and it just feels really awesome to swing it. Although the next day I'm always regret it because like two days later I'll be like, Oh my God, my triceps hurt so freaking <laughs> bad. Um, I swung that 35 pound mace and I had done a couple sets with it before I filmed it and I should have, probably just filmed it the very first time, but I wasn't sure if I could do it cause I hadn't done it in a while. And so I was like, I did like a couple sets of like, I don't know, seven, three sixties each way. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so when I finally filmed it like the third time, the next day I was like, Oh, I was like, my arms hurt so bad. So, um, but yeah. And, and that's heavy. Like for listeners who are just getting into mace or someone who hasn't swung anything like a 30 pound mace, that's fucking heavy. That's a it whole is. different, like, and I try to remind people, like, it's, it's not like you're swinging the kettlebell between your legs or you're, you know, it's behind you, right? Yeah. It's, it's completely different. Like, and even not trying to, like, I think the initial part of the swing is probably the hardest part when you're casting it, like, just 
especially if you're not, if you're not just starting from like center and you're actually casting it from the floor, like that's the first part that gets me. It's kind of like, it's the same thing like for the kettlebell swing, like that very first clean is like the hardest one because you're doing it with like no, no movement. It's just like dead weight, like from the floor and like throwing it up over your, over your shoulder. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just ordered Jake, which he knows about it now. So I guess I can say it. So I just <laughs> ordered, uh, I'm sure everybody probably knows who Ryan J. Pitts is. So yeah. he makes the custom maces. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So I totally ordered one of those freaking swords. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it might've been more, I got it for Jake for Christmas, but it might've been more for me. I mean, I just thought it looked really freaking cool. You know, it's for you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be in the gym by myself swinging that thing around like a real sword. Like that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his shit's fucking awesome. I've seen some of his stuff and I'm just like, I'm ready to order, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. His are awesome. And so, um, the other mace, uh, becomes stronger. Right. I feel like a terrible person. So uh, he's been out to our gym a couple times. Uh, he's also a soldier and he lives here in Kansas, um, but he makes those uh, yeah, the, yeah. Maces. The, the war clubs, clubs, the war clubs. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I love that thing, man. He, I have uh, two. I have ugly. So you're just like, Oh, like you want to like be rough with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I liked about it. Cause he was talking about that. He was like, you know, they're not perfect. They're not like super manufactured. I'm like, dude, I love that. I love how like, like rusty and like, I don't know. Well, I called it grungy. I didn't like about some other mesas is that you can't like, um, when I got the evil monkey ones, I'm like, Hey, can we like hit these on things like tires? And they're like, Oh no, don't do that. <laughs> oh, so shit. when, when, when he said you could do that, I was like, Oh, well that's what every mace that I've had that's been missing. Like you can't really do that with well, I guess you could do them with, um, like the honest, like the, just the, well, I think you, yeah, you could do it with them because they're right. just solid cast right. iron, but there really aren't any other ones that you can do that with. So I yeah. Cool. And he recently posted a video. I don't know if you saw it on, on Instagram where he's like literally slamming it on. I, I don't know what it was. If it was a uh, brick it was like or an iron pipe. No, it was there like you go. Pipe. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my goodness. He wasn't lying. It's indestructible. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, they're pretty, have you gotten to swing one? Yeah, I have one. Oh. I have one. And then I have, uh, like I had to make me a custom, like, um, almost like a club. It was a little bit shorter. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. Just the new ones he's doing. Yeah. And just, so you no, know, I've actually watched you a bunch of times on Facebook. Oh, you're so nice. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought you're awesome. <laughs> right. I had, I had started looking at some of your stuff, like before you had contacted me and I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know, yeah, me, yeah, me too. I was kind of spying. Just, I mean, for the same reason, there's really like not that many women that swing. Well, first of all, Mace is not, like, not like, it's like, it's like kettlebell. I mean, there's just not a ton of people that do it. Right. And when you tell people about it, they're like, what? Yeah. And you're trying to explain it. It's even harder to explain the kettlebell is to explain right. other than it's just like, oh, it's like, you know, you're a Viking. Like you're just going to swing this weight around your body. Um, so, but there wasn't a lot of women and I don't even remember how I found you the first time. I might've actually saw you just on Instagram the first time. And then I just started like creeping on all your videos. Yeah, I did the same. It was meant to be, <laughs> we were meant to be in this podcast together eventually. Yeah. Oh, I, I appreciate it. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I think, I think we covered everything. What do you think? Um, I don't know. Cause I didn't know what we were going to talk about to begin with. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm not, yeah. I'm I, not good at this. Like we were like, well, like, do you want to come teach a class? And I'm like, I don't really know if I have anything to tell people. Like, <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I think we covered, I hope everybody gets started doing mace, but I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, you're already doing mace because right. like, you were listening to it and you weren't. Or, so. or you're just curious and you're about to get into mace because you're going to go, and then they're going to go watch your videos your Mace videos. I, I have to tell people to go on your Facebook. So let's promote you a little bit. So what's your Facebook link and then your Instagram? So for Instagram, it's, it's obviously kettlebell. So <laughs> kettlebell Kim Fox. So that's my Instagram. And then you can find me on Facebook, uh, just under Kimberly C Fox. 
Um, or you can check out our Fox Fitness uh, page, which is um, Fox Fitness BJJ. Right on. And then where's your gym at? So it's in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Um, and then we have one of the, I think we really have one of the only kettlebell gyms now that's in Kansas, but we definitely have the only ones in Wichita. Right as far on. As kettlebell sport. And same thing from... There's a couple other people that have mesas here, but I think we have probably the biggest collection of mesas. Right no. on. Right on. So if they're in your area, they should go check you out because who doesn't want to see a collection of mesas? My, room, my room is full of like mesas. I don't know what to do with them. I mean, I use them, but shit, I don't need, I need to like get a rack or something for them. Well, we just need to get more women involved swinging mesas <laughs> because guys can't be the only big, big swinging dicks. We need to be like, Swinging something, I don't know. Yeah, we need to swing no. <laughs> a stick with a ball at the end. <laughs> right on. All right, yeah, I hope that this episode really inspires some women to pick up a mace. Everyone check out Kim Fox. <laughs> She's awesome. Well, compared it to penises, I'm sure like so many women are going to be like, yeah, Hell let's yeah. do that. <laughs> exactly, They're like penis, let's do it. All fucked up. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. This was uh, season two, episode one with Kim Fox. Make sure you check her out and we're out.